I told for, Foreman told me later on, it's interesting. If you when you really get to know these guys, some of the stuff you never write because it's too oh, personal, so you, yeah. or you think it's nobody's business. Right. Although I think perhaps you got a couple of fellows over there who would write it if he were in his coffin, you know. Well, they would, um, yeah. But we got some over here too, so I should say. But there isn't many people that, uh, that was blessed as you that have that had this, uh, you know, opportunity to, to have got well, to yeah, know but these you guys. Yeah, but then you don't do anything. Uh, you know what I mean? You, 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 if a guy sneezes, how many guys are going to have to fight he's got pneumonia? Mm, yeah. And he doesn't. He's got allergy or something, yeah. you know? I mean, you, you, you can't, you, you got to know what you're writing about. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's no you doubt. Gotta, you know, and if you, do, if you can't do enough you research, do. or you don't know the guy well enough, you know, then take a pass. And if somebody else wants to write it, let him write it, because you know the guy well enough to know he can't prove it. Yeah. Let, I mean, me, let me go back here one second about this. Um, Foreman told me years later, I should have died. I should have died. I should have, you know, he said I never should have. I should have gotten up. He said he got up in time. He did Did he feel as though he quit? He, he said I should have gotten up. I could have. He said I could have. Uh. Anyway, later on, I told him after he won the title back way after he, after he knocked out Bora, remember? Oh, yeah. Bora. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, I said to him that night, later that night, after I'd written, we were sitting in his room and I said, George, that wasn't a fight at all for you. He said, what are you talking about? I said, it was an exorcism. Yeah. It was in your head from the moment you guys got to Africa, and he never left it until he retired. And he said, you're right. You're absolutely right. He said, you know, he said, I I just, uh, the guy was too smart for me. What happened was, actually, uh, the way I saw the fight, I saw it a little differently than other people. Allie went to the ropes, remember, in the middle of the first round. Mm-hmm. He went to the ropes. I felt, I seemed to recall he'd been hit in the throat. So whatever it was for me to hit him with, you know, it hurt. Yeah. Uh, he said, yeah. let me go to the ropes and figure this thing out. And he had his hands up. And then he realized, this sucker, what's wrong with him? He's trying to punch through my gloves. Uh, George could have broken his arms. Right, yeah. But yeah. George is going to get that right hand through the gloves and prove he was this and you know, And that went on and on. And finally, and Ali was talking to him, you punch like a girl. It's amazing, isn't it? Ali, that, that, to say that. And Ali, if you go back and look at that fight, I don't remember the weather read, or whether it ended the 8th or ninth. Eight. The round before it ended, Ali took one, first time in the fight, took one step forward, and hit him with the right hand, mm-hmm. and then went back to the ropes. And that was, let me see what I can do. I can do it. I'll take care of business next round. Mm-hmm. And people think a lot of people say he hit him with a he hit him with a with a short, short right hand, and he wobbled. And then he hit him. Then he hit him with a left, uh, which was just almost measuring him. It was didn't have to do any damage. And he came with the other right hand, and he knocked him down. Yeah. And he fell. It was like watching a tree fall. He yeah. fell in section. Well, you raise it. Uh, you raise it beautifully in your book. He you said his. You say his feet went first, and his legs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You went quick. He was. Fell in section. He was such a huge guy, wasn't he? Like a red tree. Well, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. And to see that, uh-huh. to see that. But I wanted to tell you one last thing before we get off, Ali, and I, I don't want to run your show. For no, you. absolutely I'm genius. I'm going to tell you two things about. People ask me the same question over and over. How do you remember Muhammad? Yeah, good question. I'll tell you the two things that they happened after the Holmes fight. Oh, yeah, the tragic fight. That's one of my first memories. Oh, that was One but of my first before memories. Before the, before the fight, there's another thing I want to tell you. I'm in his room the night before the fight. Did you know he was he was damaged? I mean, not oh, damaged. Oh, I knew he was through. He was so through. In fact, he kept saying, who you pick it, who you pick it. Yeah. Don't ask me that, because you know the answer. Yeah, you still picked him. Because you loved him so much. I would have no, done. No, I, I didn't pick him. You didn't? I, I mean, I don't want to cheat the readers. I knew he couldn't fight. Right. I mean, it was over. Yeah. And I thought it was his last fight. Unfortunately, he did that 
Oh, the Bourbon. Like the Cinder Bahamas. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so I'm in his room, and he says, you don't think I can win? I say, Tim, let me tell you something. I came here to tell you, look, I don't know what's going to happen in this fight, but I'm assuming it's your last fight. And uh, I just want to tell you, I want to thank you for all the days I had a big white space where my colleagues could have been, and you came and told this for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Beautiful. he laughed, and then he stood up and he said, you see, oh, I'm going to show you something. He ripped his shirt off. All the buttons flew. <laughs> it, was, it was eerie. It was absolutely eerie. He looked the way he looked the night he beat this thing. He looked in shape. But I said, you could have done that with a diet the helps for. I didn't know at the time. He was on diuretics yeah. for two weeks. He could hardly lift his arms to fight the night of the fight. Oh, wow. So after the fight, I'm wandering, two things happen. I'm wandering around, and I'm, uh, I'm gambling, and I'm losing, and I'm gambling some more, and I'm losing some more. I'm being pissed off. Now it's three in the morning, and I just felt like shit. So I go into the men's room, and this elderly black fellow hands me a towel after he washed my hands. Yeah. Now, I say elderly. Today, he'd be a kid to me at night. He was probably 50, 50 old. Then he was much older than me. Yeah. His face looked like an aerial map of the Burma Road with all these lines. Oh, all right. So he asked me the towel, and I said, hey, Sir, do you mind if I ask you a question? You called him no, Sir. <laughs> I said, did you bet on this fight? He said, I damn sure did. And I said, who did you bet on? And he gave me this look and he said, I bet on the man who gave me dignity. Uh, That's one way I remember him. Yeah. The other way I remember him is after the fight in Zaire, it had a, we had a horrendous rage. Yeah. If the rain had come an hour earlier, there would have been no fight. I've only read about it, obviously, but yeah. I've, yeah I've but read. it was well, an African rain storm. Yeah. And fight would have been off. Yeah, yeah. And and so he goes back right after the fight. And now we can't go anywhere. Well, first we're riding, and now we can't go anywhere because it's raining. And finally the, the, bu the bus comes, and we go. And I'm sitting with Dave Anderson for the Times. Good guy. Yeah. Good writer. He wrote... Uh, Sugar Ray Robinson's thing. And Dave, I said, Dave, I'll tell you something. I'm not happy with tonight. He said, well, who could be happy? You had to do it. If I was at four in the morning, we're all half asleep, and, you know, because of the satellite. Mm. And and, uh, it, it, and it was so surprising, and what do you write, you know? <laughs> so uh, I remember I wrote, this is the night the cow bit the butcher. But anyway, uh, so... Uh, I said, I want to try to find him. He said, he's on a military reservation. If you want to find him, I'll go look with you. I would, I would like to see him too. I said, i tell you something. I know where he's going to be if, he, if we find him. He'll be down by the river, Congo River. So we go to the riverbank, and we're on a little hill overlooking it. Not high, you know, just higher than he is. Yeah. He's standing at the edge of the water, and he's shouting into the water. I don't know, we can't hear him. We, don't, but we know he's shouting. And he's facing toward what was once French Congo. And he thrusts both his arms in the air in a rocky pose. Yeah. And he's still shouting. And we said, what the hell is going on? He puts his arms out, turns, comes back, and then he sees us. And he says, fellas, don't ask me uh, about what tonight meant to me. Because I'm still not sure, and if I could explain it, you wouldn't understand it. Mm. And and they went then he went back to his little villa there. And when I think about that, I, I recall him standing by the water, both arms in the air, facing the water, yeah. yelling. And I think to myself, in that moment, he was really the king of the world, oh. and that's how I'm going to remember. Abs that's a, that's an amazing that's an awesome story. I mean not, not not with not with what I saw later when he lost his voice. No. Funny, you knew where he'd be though. You knew he'd be there near that river. Yeah, it's uh he was a good friend. We had a lot of fun. He did something for me and my children that I will never forget. Mm. 
You want to hear it? Absolutely. <laughs> if you don't, I mean, it's personal. <laughs> I, well, I know. Uh, if I didn't want to tell it, you know, I mean, uh, I, yeah, I, yeah. I would have answered. Obviously, yeah, of course, so, yeah. I went to make a film called The Last Fight. Right. Because uh, my the theory was no more heavyweights in the universe, right? Right. Because uh, there was no format. No. Yeah. And and uh, it was about Ali and, and uh, I'm sorry, there is Ali and Frazier, right? There are those two fighters. Frazier was in disrepute then. Mm. All right, so I go to make the film and I'm, I got, I've just taken, now I'm a single father. Uh, the divorce was a year before, and I have now taken custody of both of my children, right? Right. And they're in the car with me, we're driving up to Deer Lake Creek. And they've been with me for about a week. And they're a little shy and timid because God knows what their mother told them about me, you know, mm. just the way it was, she was a crook. So, which, that's not important. So anyway, uh, she says to me in the car, I hope George Foreman knocks him out. Now she's seven and the boys, but she's like eight and the boys eleven. And I say, you know something? You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Why would you say that? It's a business. You know, shake hands afterwards. Both of them, you know, Mohammed is my close friend. Both of them are my friends. So why would you say that? Mm -hmm. So uh, I, and I said to my son, who's all about. I know you're interested in television. Go with the crew and help them carry the equipment and keep your eyes open. Maybe you'll learn something today. And she said, well, what am I gonna do? I said, well, the first thing you're gonna do is keep your mouth shut. <laughs> uh, she said, well, he brags and I, you told me I shouldn't brag. I said, you, you already just said what the hell you got to brag about. <laughs> go up there, go to Aunt Coretta's kitchen, and tell her you're the official water girl for my crew. She'll give you a couple of bottles of water to take, carry around with the crew. And and if you keep your mouth shut, she'll probably give you a piece of pie. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we, we get up there. I got him out of my way now. I'm doing Allie and I are doing our thing. Yeah. Now, he's, we're in the dressing room and he's, we're packing up the equipment and he and I are talking. And he says to me, is that your boy over there? And I said, I told him he was going to be with the crew. I said, yeah. yeah. And he knew the story. He didn't know that, but he knew the story about that live with me. And he said, do you mind if I talk to him? I said, no, please do. He puts his arm around him and he says, Bob, I want to tell you something. He said, uh, you have come to live with a great man. And if you listen to him and learn, you'll grow up to be great too. Well, it's just what I needed, you know? That's all, yeah, that's... Yeah, all right, okay, but that's not the end of the story. Uh -huh. He says, Where's the little girl? She's standing in the back of the room, and she's, she, we're talking very softly. Yeah. She decided, what were you decide if you were eight? I'm riding her out, telling her what she said in, what she said in the car, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she's trying to put her shoulders through the wall. She's leaning back into the wall, <laughs> hoping he wouldn't see her. She's feeling good. And he says, uh, little girl, little girl, come up here. <laughs> and she says, there's nothing. Yeah. He says, I'm talking to you, little girl, with the birds come up here now, right to me. <laughs> oh, well, well. Now she's walking in, she's terrified. She has lost control of the English language, yeah. okay? He's swooping, he's six three, and she's like four seven. Yeah. He swoops in, picks her up, holds her over his head. And he says, is that your daddy? And she says, <laughs> <laughs> don't you rely on me, little girl? Is that your daddy? Is that your daddy? That man is ugly. You can't be with that. You're beautiful. <laughs> the gypsies must have brought you. Now, give me a kiss, okay? Now we're driving back in the car, and she says, Oh, I hope Muhammad can win. <laughs> I said, I'm going to lose, except for the age. Oh, that's... Why is that not in your book? It was too personal. That's awesome. Can I put that in my pizza or not? I don't want it. Of course. It. I don't want to, Jerry. That's a so personal. Yeah, but take, Beautiful. Take out the part about her. Take part about her. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, that is abs You know, that's just so priceless. That is. Well, you know, it's, but it shows the that's effect. Ali. You know, when yeah. Ali, it was a. Yeah, I tell you, he used to say to me all the time. I got to tell you one more story. Isn't you going to be 
was. He was. He, he truly but was anyway, the best. Let me tell you this story. <laughs> he, they were going to ban boxing in New York because uh, New York uh, State Assembly knew what you guys did. And he had a so I got a call from the guard and said, you know, we're all going up on the morning train to Albany, that's the state capital, uh, to go to the hearing. And uh, if you'd like to come along, you know, we'll. We'll, uh, I said, well, I'll buy my own ticket. But, uh, yeah, I'll ride with you guys. So we get up on a train. And this was, I had to see an alley for a long time. Right. And this was early. I mean, he had this before the Doug Jones fight. And, oh, uh, 63. Yeah. And he says, uh, uh, he's on a train and he's running around. He's, yeah, he's, uh, he's got everybody's attention on the train, of course. You know. Yeah. This is when he was really... And not only was he a loudmouth, but now he was really stupid. He was a kid. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's 22 so, or something. So now we get into the uh, hearing room, and he gets called up. Haywood Plumidor is the guy. And uh, he said, uh, I don't understand what's going on here. He said, this is Plumidor. Mm. He said, you're saying this guy's got to pull it two, he's got to pull it five. And he always does, you know. I have to find these fights suspect. So, um, what's his name says, Ali says, uh, well, he said, you know, um, you know, uh, you read the Bible, I'm sure you do. You know about prophets? I'm a prophet. I am a boxing pro. Oh, pro is a package outside. I'm a boxing prophet. Uh, and uh, that's why I call the rallies. And he said, well, I think it sounds crooked. And Haywood says, well, you know, you could be right. You know, it takes a crook to know a crook. Well, the whole hearing will break up, right? <laughs> so, not, yeah. so now, now, but we can't get back home now until there's an overnight train. So we take a hotel room, or all of us for different hotel rooms. And Ali comes in, I said, what are you wandering around for? I'm trying to write, but I like you. He said, I'm trying to find a place. Where are you supposed to? He says, I'm trying to find a place to sleep. I said, well, take my bed. I probably doesn't make that much. I said, take my bed. I don't care. So he goes to sleep on my bed. So for years, he kissed this man gave me his bed. Huh. This man gave me his bed. Huh. So finally, I got tired of it. I said, hey. I thought you were somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is absolutely. Oh. That's the kind of relationship. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is something. Nobody else could have. There's nobody. You introduced me to people. He said, This man is not as dumb as he looks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he used to say that, didn't he? I've seen some yeah, videos. I I used to, he said that to video, on videos with Harry Carpenter and yeah, yeah, Red, yeah. Reg Gutteridge. And, but nobody knew him like you. Oh, Jerry, it's a. It's solid gold, or, you know, what you're coming There's nothing. Well, There's nobody I alive. I have to do a little bit with the book. I'll tell you something. Uh, it's my opinion. Yeah. Um, you know, when you write a, you know, we got very good critical acclaim. Really good critical acclaim. Oh, the, book, the book got and nothing they, they, but good yeah, reviews, yeah. yeah. Books, yeah. Your book, okay. yeah. All of your books. Well, no, not all of them. Uh, most of them. <laughs> I would say. But I would say that these two books that I told you about, really, and I would love to sell them. Uh, because I think Black White in the novel might have a voice in, in England. I just think it might. Yeah. I might be wrong, but I think it might. I think so. I think it would be. Anyway, let me. So I'm going to say this. So, uh, if you buy the book, and I, I don't I'm not telling you about the book, but if somebody buys the book, they have the right to post a critique, mm. you know. Uh, of it, and uh, I don't pay much attention to those. In fact, I, I just I just don't. But the critics, I'm interested in. But anyway, I'm telling you this because I noticed something. I look at back over the reviews the first time the book came out. Right. And there were eight glowing reviews from readers in in London. Hmm. Which yeah. really stunned me. Really? Until I realized that boxing books outshow uh, America and, and, and England a ton. 
I think so. And I find a lot of people, I'm starting to learn because, well, I, guess, I don't know whether, whether there's a connection. I used to be a stable on Irish radio for a long time. Mm. The national radio, public radio, whatever it was. The guy used to interview me all the time. And, and, and we'd show some book show there on the internet or whatever. But this surprised me in England because I find out, I think it's more than you see me on television. Yeah. And I think that helps the book a little bit. So I have hopes for this book. I'd love the novel to show a little bit more than it. I don't think it's sold anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's there. You get it on Amazon. Right. Yeah. Well, I think it will because, like you said, there's something about books from guys like yourself that, that, that you know, doesn't, <coughs> there isn't that much out there from guys like yourself. You know, you're one of the last and... Uh, we do, we do pride ourselves that we have, we have, you know, London boxing fans and... Uh, it, it, well, the boxing book is going to show their own convention. Absolutely. I just like the novel, whatever it shows, I like the novel to show a little bit there. The novel is being looked at as a possible movie, but, you know, everybody's got a possible movie. Yeah. So that does, when they sign well, it, I think it, it could. contract, they're fine. But I don't care about the money. I really, I swear I don't, because it's the only novel. I want more people to know the story. And part of it is the story of my wife and me, too. Well, absolutely. And uh, I'll mention it, obviously, in the article. So, uh, if, you wait, if you tend to buy the book, by the way, on the inside back cover, yeah. um, there's a, or right next to it, there's a picture of my wife and me. Right. Right. Well, absolutely. And it's funny, when they wanted the picture, because it's a black-white love affair, uh, they wanted the picture, but... Uh, I said, I got to find one when we got both had a waistline. <laughs> so in the picture, I'm 50 and she's 41. Wow. But, but um, uh, the interesting thing about it is every time I think she would, she would come back in here and hear me talking to you when I mentioned the novel, mm -hmm. she, says, you be, she always says, you better tell them I'm not the woman who gets laid in Brandsburg Park. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, <laughs> Um, so enjoy, enjoy. I, the, sure. um, I know you like the boxy book, you've seen it already, um, but yeah. the new one has the Pacquiao for it. But, but uh, if, you, if you do buy the novel, I think you'll like it. Also, there's another book I'll recommend. You know, I stay away from the football books, but you, you, you know, I don't think you'd be interested. You're not interested in American football, I would think. Well, it's not really. I mean, there's, there's a cult, I know, cult I know. following. So what I'm saying is, there is a book you could buy secondhand. And unless you buy a collector's edition, which is ridiculous in price. Yeah. If you buy a, a, a second hand from Amazon, on, the book is called Arrivals. Right. You you uh, probably can get it for about 10 bucks. Right. Right. Interesting. But that book has got a, a lot of social significance all the way to Secretariat. I mean, everything is in the book. Yeah. Well, anything you write is readable <laughs> putting it mildly you know anything you write is beautifully written so yeah obviously yeah we love the boxing stuff mostly but obviously you've covered all those other sports as well so well i just want to thank you so much for your time mr eisenberg you know, uh, you, real pleasure you send, um um sternberg a link to the broadcast yeah absolutely i send it to fred yeah 